Cheers, everyone. So for the first episode of Coffee with Cameron, I came across a video from the Lou Later podcast, and it's a clip from the Later Clips channel where he's discussing the fundamental impossibility of controlling super intelligent AI. And this is something I've thought about how programmers in developing AI can build in restrictions to prevent AI from getting out of control. And this is a concern that Elon Musk has. This is not a concern that Jack Ma have. Uh, the, there's a... That's not gonna appear. Cheers, everyone. So, for the... Cheers, everyone. So for the first episode of Coffee with Cameron, I want to talk about a clip from the Lou Later channel. In this channel, um, Lou talks about the fundamental impossibility of controlling super intelligent AI. This is a concern that Elon Musk has had, and he's voiced it. Other really important people like Jack Ma, you know, these wealthy, super successful people have different takes on it. Jack Ma personally believes that humans will always be able to control AI, whereas uh, Elon and the the authors of this article that Lou is going through in his video believe that super intelligent AI is fundamentally impossible to control. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch the clip and I'm going to try to react to it. Uh, it's going to be a little choppy just to avoid any kind of copyright claims, uh, but let's get through it. Now in the land of autonomous, in the land of AI, you know there's some people who are a little bit afraid of this stuff, Well, mm -hmm. You know, there's some people think this is going to go well beyond human capabilities and just be out of control because of the level of intelligence and the self-learning capabilities and the potential for something eventually that's sentient and gets to decide, even with a set of instructions, gets to decide how best to implement those instructions. So from a very limited standpoint, that is the concern is we create a set of code and that set of code is considered super intelligent AI and it is able to use data sets to then make decisions and then either implement them on their own or inform us humans how to implement them. What's most likely gonna happen is the AI is gonna be built into autonomous systems that are then going to be implemented, like autonomous cars, like manufacturing. Um, it might be programs that you know buy and sell stocks to manipulate, this, manipulate or make money off the stock market. And what Lou is referring to is one outcome. So let's continue. That freaks people out. Well, anyway, here we have a story uh, suggesting that computer scientists wouldn't be able to control super intelligent machines. Really quick, that's my take. I don't think that computer scientists, humans in general, will be able to control super intelligent machines or super intelligent AI. And that's fundamentally because in order to develop a super intelligent AI, you have to be offering it data sets that would allow it to potentially be self-protection uh, protective so essentially you'd have to connect it to the internet to be super intelligent and by doing that you are connecting it to all sorts of devices that it could hide itself in because one of the fundamental things that a super intelligent AI fundamentally would want to do is to protect itself and prevent it from dying by you know the code being deleted theoretical calculations showed it would be fundamentally impossible in other words they're saying once the cat's out of the bag the cat's out of bag cat's out of bag real quick Who's trying to put a cat in a bag, and why was the the cat in the bag in the first place? I'm just, I've always thought that that's a weird phrase. In other words, they're saying, once this thing happens, once we pass this particular threshold, yeah. hands off. Right. So, now, if this is some complex stuff as far as understanding is concerned, computer scientists and philosophers have asked themselves whether we would be able to control a super intelligent AI at all in order to ensure that it would not pose a threat to humanity. So a team of computer scientists used theoretical calculations and they discovered that it would be fundamentally impossible to control such a thing. Here's the quote. I'm glad that scientists are able to get to the same conclusion as I with some basic understanding of computer systems and programming and just the trajectory of technology came to on my own. It's kind of reassuring. A super intelligent machine that controls the world sounds like science fiction, but there are already machines that perform certain important tasks independently without programmers, fully understanding how they learned it. The question therefore arises whether this could at some point become uncontrollable and dangerous for humanity. This is the co-author of uh, this particular study. So scientists explored a couple of different ideas on how you might control something that's super intelligent like this. The One of the ways they, they determined was just to shut it off from the internet completely. So like I mentioned before, that shutting it off from the internet is going to be 
one of the decision making, uh, I guess, tree uh, points at which scientists will choose to connect it to the internet. You would either have to connect it to the actual internet or mirror, create a, a you know, virtual machine mirror of the internet in order for the super intelligent AI to actually come into existence. And so that limitation that Lou was mentioning, I don't think is going to be a tenable solution to prevent AI from getting out of control. To, to, to stop it from communicating, but that kind of defeats the purpose of the intelligence in the first place. Mm -hmm. And obviously, as you know, once we get to that point, there's no way it's going to let you. Yeah, it's about survival for them. <laughs> All right, so they got to the same point I came to, which was that the program itself is going to want to survive, and it's just not a solution to either allow the AI to be created, like Lou said, and then um, his his producer said that you know it's about survival. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it'll be over. In this study, the team conceived a theoretical containment algorithm that ensures a super intelligent AI cannot harm people under any circumstances. That's an awful idea. If you make the ultimatum to a, a piece of software that it, it cannot control or it, it cannot harm people in any way, you're not looking at any of the edge cases which represent the majority of situations we deal with. Um, so one example is the, the train track experiment. So you've got three people on one track and you've got one person on the other. Uh, and the numbers are kind of arbitrary, whether it's you know five and three, uh, and th you know, five and one, three and one, you know, whatever. Um, and the train track experiment is essentially there's a train going down one track uh, and then you're at a switching point so that you can move the, the train tracks or the train to then go out down a different path. And the train is currently on the path to kill that larger number, three, five, whatever. And you have the decision of being able to switch the train to be going down the other track, which then would kill one or that smaller number of people. And that's a situation that will happen at some point. So an AI posed with the you can't hurt anybody under any circumstances is now faced with a decision that you can't act, but by not acting, that's fundamentally an action, right? So it, you're creating a, a rule that can't be satisfied on some of these edge cases, which we come across on a not too uncommon basis. By simulating the behavior of the AI first and halting it, if considered harmful, but careful analysis shows that in our current paradigm of computing, such an algorithm cannot be built. It's like some sort of paradoxical yeah, that's situation. Like, uh, the laws in iRobot, right? Probably. Where you would prevent someone from hurting others, but then, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's like hurt it's like themselves it, or something, and then yeah, I'm if, just gonna the robot's gonna stop you, like they're on, <laughs> and then humankind is just gonna. Are you saying that this study is basically iRobot and it's already been done? Yeah, they made a movie out of it. it. That's kind of the beauty of science fiction writers is they create these thought experiments well before we actually come to situations where our technology has actually has to face these uh, you know problems, right? So. Isaac Asimov wrote iRobot, you know, many, many decades ago before we even had computers capable of dealing with AI, but he knew that that was going to come, there was going to be a point at which we had computers capable of thinking for themselves. And he created the three laws of robotics um, that, you know, a robot can't, through action or inaction, hurt a person, that the robot can't, um, let's pull that up. All right, so real quick, a robot may not injure a human being or through an action allow a human being to come to harm. So that, you know, is that problem with the train tracks if they act, one person gets hurt uh, versus the, the larger number. But if they don't act, the, the same larger number of people get hurt. So you're in that, you know, conundrum. A robot must obey the orders given it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. That makes sense, right? You wouldn't want, hey, go kill that person uh, to be... Uh, a situation that the robot would have to undertake. And then finally, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second laws. Now that's where the the logic of the super intelligent AI connected to the internet is problematic is because it'll see first and second laws as situations where it might have to destroy its own existence because, you know, inaction or in action or inaction would cause it to, you know, hurt a person. And then so it says, well, this instance of myself I can destroy because then I'm not, you know, violating either the first or second law. But then the third law, 
would then cause it to want to, you know, create copies of itself throughout the internet so it never theoretically dies um, and it's protecting its own existence. So let's go back to the video. If you, if you break, break down, down the, pro if you break the problem down to basic rules from theoretical, theoretical computer science, science, it turns out that an algorithm that would com command an AI, AI not, not to destroy the world could inadvertently halt its own operations. operations. If it, All right, let's start skipping ahead. And uh, these scientists who know far more than you or I and other individuals who have studied mm -hmm. such a thing understand the complexity in controlling something like this, and most seem to have come to the conclusion that, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a genie out the bottle, it's a cat out the bag, it's a... Um, it's a tough one. Are you scared? Of AI? Yeah. It seems so inevitable to me that being scared, it seems futile. Lou has a really solid point. This is something that Elon is concerned about, right? He understands that being concerned about AI is somewhat futile, but he understands that he also wants to, you know, solve this problem. How do we, you know, control super intelligent AI? Because a lot of data scientists are saying you can't. And Elon, now the richest man in the world, is going to probably be one of the, the few people that are going to have to face it with the, the Tesla cars and the, the AI that drives their autonomous vehicle um, driving. You need to create a solution for the, the edge case of, you know, somebody's walking across the road. Okay, do I, you know, do I run the car off the road and potentially harm the occupants or do I hit the person in, in, that's walking into the road? or on a different uh, circumstance, you know, you kill the child that ran into the road by running them over, or you drive into a lady pushing her, you know, shopping cart. Th those are cases where driving cars are gonna be running AI that are gonna have to solve these problems on the fly rapidly, and you're gonna need AI to do it. You can't just use machine learning algorithms. You really need something that's more sophisticated. So you're just going to accept it? Well, it just, I don't know. I, I know that people with more influence than me have tried to talk about it or, or uh, alter it in some way, but it doesn't seem possible. It seems there's already... Lou, again, brings up a point. I mean, he's got, you know, hundreds of thousands of people that watch his channel, even millions, and I'm even smaller than that by a ma order of magnitude or many orders of magnitude. And he brings up a point is that, you know, he is, you know a small brain in the, the sea of brains relative to people who are thinking about and trying to solve these problems. And I, I would argue that I, I'm even smaller than that, right? So whether I'm able to, you know, put my two cents into this, this thought, eh, is it even worth it? I think so, because I think I have a, a perspective on this. I think the rest of the video is interesting, but I'm going to skip to what would I do if I had um, a super intelligent AI where I had a team of coders that they had, you know, on this flash drive, there's the code for a super intelligent AI. We are going to, f you have God mode and you can splice in any set of commands that would be executed to some extent perfectly. Um, uh, and you, your goal is to contain this so that it doesn't run awry. And uh, the, the, the solutions that we saw were, you know, disconnecting it from the internet. The other solution was to have a master program where it basically, it runs the three laws of, uh, of robotics as a simulation before it does any action. So that, that's another interesting way. But I think the only way to really control super, in, super intelligent machines isn't to worry about the actions it does based on the code that it currently has. A lot of people think of these super intelligent AIs as as a fixed you know code set right they have a set of data and it, you know the internet would be its data set in most cases and you know it's a word document like you know we have pieces of code you know Google Chrome is a piece of code uh, you know Google is a piece of code you know Windows Windows 10 is a piece of code we we think of you know an AI as this one script that is constantly running and I think that's the fundamental problem that we can solve in solving the problem of super intelligent AI getting out of control and is realizing that super intelligent AI will fundamentally be able to reprogram themselves if we don't prevent that from happening. So if you think about it, you would encapsulate all of the code in a master command that would say you cannot change your code. You can run simulations of altered code, but you you 
cannot change your code itself. And then that would be the ultimate way to prevent super intelligent AI from running awry. Because again, if it's connected to the internet and it's a code set that it can tr you know, transmit, it could theoretically be, you know, it, it goes from 10% smarter than a human upon initiation of, of, of the code to very rapidly, if it's actually in the, you know, the realm of intelligence, it'll immediately become infinitely, or not immediately infinitely, but it'll be a hundred times smarter than a human within moments because it has way more computing power. It would just task computers on the internet across the world, like a botnet to, you know, improve its code. It would run simulations and algorithms to, to, change, to change its code. And then eventually we would just not even know what the code is. We would see a copy somewhere. Is that the latest code? I, I, I don't know. Uh, and it becomes an enemy you can't fight. So grouping all of the code within an umbrella program that would say, this is a fixed code set and you can you know, absorb as much data as you want into that, but you cannot change your code set. And then you can propose code changes to engineers. And already that's getting onto an interesting debate, but I, I don't know if the scope of this video makes sense to include that, but basically, Never allow the code to change itself. And I think you have the first and most important stopgap to prevent a super intelligent AI and super intelligent AI from getting out of control. And I think uh, we can amend the video here. I got through half a cup of coffee in this video, a lot of stuttering, a lot of I mean, it was delicious coffee, but I think this is one great video. And I think a lot more people should be thinking about the problems that we face. Um, I know, Everybody's stuck with the humdrum of their life, whether it be the nine to five, whether it be their personal finances, whether it be their fitness, their health, uh, longevity, all those things that you know I think about. But we should also be thinking about these larger problems. We have, you know, people small and large, people who are, have the area of expertise, you know, majored in computer science, people who really should be focused on it. They are, but the people who might have other solutions who could think about it in a different angle, right? We don't necessarily need to have, only have computer scientists thinking about computer science problems. We don't think need to only have marketers thinking about marketing problems. And I think that that's fundamentally what I want to do with Coffee with Cameron. We're going to be enjoying another cup of coffee uh, every few weeks or every week as often as I find an interesting video that I can give my take on. And I really think this is a, an opportunity if down in the comments we can have a civil conversation, disagreeing, agreeing, uh, you know, absolutely obliterating my opinion, maybe linking to articles that you have found where uh, you, it proves my opinion wrong, right, whatever. Uh, it would be great to hear other people's perspectives, and that's the goal of Coffee with Cameron, is to have a conversation with me and all of you. Alrighty, till next time.